Hi guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. This is the Q&A for tramming the vise, and there was actually two videos on it. One talked about tramming it so it's square to the machine. The other one was, what if you need to set your vise at an angle? And there are some really great questions that came in through the comment section of my YouTube channel that I want to address. The first one is from Dave Ticehurst. From Dave Ticehurst. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Dave. Dave asked, is that a true 90? And that's a great question. Because once it was put in the vise here, I was trusting that it's correct. And if it was off, well, it would throw everything off. Because the angle on these are set up, this to this edge are correct at this one here, I'm going to be 30 degrees. Well, I have tested this set, and I know that it's a true 90. The other set I have of these, this is not a true 90 degree because this edge here has not been ground and finished correctly. And you have to look at it fairly close, but you will look at it and you'll see that it is not a ground finish. So it's something to look at when you buy a set of these gauge blocks or if you already have a set of these angled gauge blocks to double check and make sure that's squared. Dave, great, great comment. The next one comes from Stefan. Stefan wanted to know more about this bracket and how it all mounts up there. And it's really a great question and I apologize that I don't always go into in depth of everything that I work with on the machine because well the videos could be very, 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 very long. So I try to take shortcuts and I apologize if I don't explain something. So leave a comment and I'll see if I can address either touch base with you or do some sort of video like I'm right now doing for Stefan. So Stefan, here's what this arm is. And I don't talk about this arm very much for another reason is I don't particularly like it. The concept of this arm is excellent. The execution of it is poor. What does make it excellent is I can easily clamp it on to the quill and not have to remove a cutter that I have in there. And if it's a large fly cutter, I may have to or something, but the concept is I don't have to remove the cutter to come in here and set it. A couple other things I really like about it is it has three actuation joints, so I can pretty much move my test indicator in multiple directions. The shortcoming to it is this top one is a round bar, so I can create odd angles and cause me a problem with yaw and not allow my test indicator to line up correctly. And the reason they did that is so you could elevate this up and down, but to be honest, I would rather just have another straight bar here and someday I will correct it. And that bar will keep everything in alignment because I don't want it to be, you know, cockeyed cock off to the side like that. Another viewer talked about or wanted to know more about the Mitch Toyo test indicator. And Mitch Toyo makes one, Brown and Sharp makes one, everybody kind of makes one. But he was curious more about the probe and how that gets set up. Well, what it is, is it's actually a friction fit where I can change the angle of it and set it up in any way that it needs to be. So if I needed to be able to read the test indicator at this angle, I could do it. If I needed to do something different, I can set up there. So it's a great system that just allows that needle or that probe to go in almost any direction it needs to to help get the indicator in to the correct angle. So I hope that kind of covers that for you, Stefan. Now another great question was from Kurt Douglas. Hmm, name sounds familiar. He wanted to know, what if you don't have a set of angle blocks? Well, the great thing is angle blocks are pretty affordable. I think they're about 30 bucks. 30 bucks. So you can buy them, they're pretty affordable, but if you're in a pinch and you don't want to have to mail, get them mailed overnight, another way to do it is, of course, with sign bars. And here's a couple sign bars. I've got a 5-inch uh, sign bar here. This one here is really unique because it has kind of these little outriggers and it helps you get into other positions. 
Here's a three inch one, which I'm gonna demonstrate with today of how to set this up. And it is, I'm not gonna go into how to use the sign bar correctly. I'm just gonna touch on this right now and someday I'll do a full video on sign bars. But the idea of a sign bar is you have two pivot points and if you know what angle you want, you can make a calculation here and it's a very easy calculation. Of course, you just go to your phone, you type in sign bar calculator and well, something will come up and you'll be able to just punch in, I need 30 degrees, I got a three inch sign bar and a particular number will come out. So, I'm going to just demonstrate for you what I've done here. So I'm gonna set this vise to about 32 degrees. Now, outside Screwball asked a question about, well, last time I set up to 30 degrees, he says, well, if you make a cut, is it 30 degrees? Is it 60 degrees? And the answer is, it's confusing. The answer is yes and no. It matters how you put the part in there and what you wanna do. I always suggest doing a test cut, whatever, cutting any angles just to make sure that your orientation is correct. So I hope that answers your question, Chuck. Um, it's just confusing. So let's get back to the sign bar. So I'm gonna do 32 degrees, which the measurement for that is 1.589, okay? So I set up a couple blocks here. These are not gauge blocks, they are spacer blocks. And they work very similar to gauge blocks. You can go to Shars, get a set of these for about 45 bucks. Great investment. A little screw inside that you can set up so these will attach and hold together. A lot nicer sometimes than using gauge blocks. And the other thing is, the difference really between this and gauge blocks is their accuracy. Gauge blocks will go down to ten thousandths of an inch. Well, this will only go down to a thousandths of an inch, but in reality, that's really good enough for a lot of the work I do, except when I'm working, of course, on the surface grinder. So what we want to do is we've got our block set up. The trick here is, well, let me go back to this, is you want to be able to set up your sign bar and keep it level. Well, you can come in with parallels, and the challenge is, well, they're a little shaky and they're going to fall. Another great way to do it is you just go in with a one, two, three block. In a second here, it's gonna be obvious why you wanna go in with a one, two, three block. For one thing, you get stability, all right? The sign block or the sign bar is not going to move on you. The other thing is, is it's gonna give you a great surface to hold these spacer blocks and they're not gonna fall off. So what you're also gonna to wanna to do is kind of press this in against this vise, kind of square it up and go into it. Now, here's our indicating edge that we want to work with. So let me clear a couple things out of the way. And we're going to do the exact same method we did on everything else. We're going to line up our probe. And I'm going to keep it vertical just because why not? It, I can make it horizontal. I can make it vertical. It's whatever I need to make it read, but I'm setting it up here for you guys so you can see it a little, see it a little easier. Next, I'm gonna go, I know I need to be around 32 degrees, so I'm gonna come into here, set this just shy of 32 degrees. So now, I know if I need, when I run this across the indicator, I know what side to tap on, and it makes it a lot easier. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna set this up. Now, another thing that makes this gauge different than a dial indicator is this needle can only clock a little over one revolution. So I'm gonna only clock it to about halfway of its capacity. And I'm going to turn the handle. Look, mom, no power feed. And I'm going to literally tap on this. Um, wow, that's pretty good. And I'll just keep tapping on it. I'm gonna overdo it so you can see the needle move. The goal is to get the needle to stop moving. There we go. That is set up. Now, somebody else called me out on this as, 
Well, when you tighten it down, it's going to be out of alignment. Darn right it will be, but that's why you double check yourself. You'll tighten these down, secure it, turn the crank, see what happens. So that's the way you deal with it with a sign bar. Now, the next question, whew, I'm trying to get through this as fast as I can, guys, is U-pop. Can this also be used on a tilting vise? And the answer is yes. I'm going to clear this away and show you guys how to do it. So there you go. That is how you tram in a vise at an angle. Now, I will admit this vise is not a milling machine vise. I don't have a milling machine vise that I can tilt, but I just wanted to show you what is possible. But the idea is there of moving the whole table and just keep bumping it until the needle on the indicator stops moving. All right, guys. Give me some thumbs up if you like this video. Also give me some great comments. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.